grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Probably one of the last things you expected when you came to Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church today was to read on the front of the bulletin that today we are celebrating the Feast of St. Mary, Mother of our Lord. In fact, some of you might have thought about turning around. This is not very Lutheran. What is this thing about a feast day? What is this thing about a saint? Didn't the Reformation do away with all that? Well, in a way, you're right. The Reformation did away with the cult of the saints, with the false worship of the saints, and restored the saints to their proper place of glory in our heavenly kingdom. The saints, in fact, are a very important gift to the church, for in them we see some of the finest examples of faithfulness toward God and fervent love for neighbor. Inasmuch as you might have looked up to your parents or an older sibling, a teacher, or whoever it was that inspired you in your youth, so also in the church we look up to the saints. For in baptism, each of us is made as a little child. And the saints are our elder brothers and sisters to whom we can look for an example of faithful and devout living in this holy household. And the Blessed Virgin Mary has indeed a special place in this house and a special place among the saints, not as a mediator or intercessor. No, those glorious tasks belong to Christ and to Christ alone. He is our advocate with the Father and the propitiator of our sin. Now, St. Mary is special because in her and in no one else, God dwelt in a unique and special way. She is what the ancient church called Theotokos, literally God-bearer, because she bore within her womb the very person of God. God made flesh a little human being, entirely man, entirely divine, nourished and fed for nine months. Truly an amazing thing that the Creator would join His creation. And while St. Paul might have boasted in the flesh, as he recalls in his letter to the Philippians, St. Mary could certainly boast more. She is the mother of God. But boasting is not what she does. And coincidentally, boasting is not what St. Paul endorses either. Recall what it is that St. Mary says. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. She magnifies the Lord, which is to say that she praises Him. She recalls His wondrous deeds. She glorifies God and humbles herself. And that's why this song, this hymn of praise, is known as the Magnificat, because it magnifies or praises the Lord. And in choosing St. Mary to be Theotokos, Choosing this humble little girl of no account, no importance, a poor and lowly nobody, to be his mother and the woman in whom the promised seed of Abraham is fulfilled, we catch a glimpse of how God deals with us in his mercy. For our Lord does not work through power and might, though these are certainly his, Rather, he works in unexpected ways. He chooses what is foolish to shame the wise and what is weak in the world to shame the strong. It is what theologians call the great reversal, that lowly Mary would be elevated as the mother of God, 
while the second person of the Trinity, God's only begotten Son, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, true God of true God, the one through whom all things that ever are have been made, he would empty himself and he would take the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. We speak about the two states of Christ, his state of humiliation and his state of exaltation. The state of humiliation being from when he was conceived to when he died, and the state of exaltation from when he was buried to when he rose again and ascended into heaven. Now, it might seem to you that this says being a human being is a humiliating thing. I mean, the state of humiliation, right? But what this talks about is that the king of glory, who had but to speak a word and to subject all the nations of the world, he set aside his power. He laid it to the side. And for the duration of his ministry here on earth, he did not fully access or utilize his power that is his. He didn't work through strength or through force, but he worked through the humility of a humble servant. Christ, the eternal judge, to whom all creation must give account, is handed over to be judged by sinful men and found worthy of death, worthy of a death most shameful. And yet what was supposed to be this great victory of Satan, the very death of God, is in fact God's final and eternal victory. For with his holy, precious blood and with his inno innocent suffering and death, Christ has redeemed all. Christ has redeemed you, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won you from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil. Purchased and won you that you might be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. For the cross is where this whole great reversal reaches its fullness in what we also call the great exchange. Where Christ freely takes your sin upon himself and he gives to you his righteousness. And that is what St. Paul was talking about in our epistle reading today. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. You, clothed in Christ, God looks upon you. He sees not your sin, but he sees only his son, a full heir to whom the whole kingdom belongs. Yours is eternity. Yours is the blessed union with our Father. Our Lord Jesus Christ has humbled himself so that he might exalt you. And you are so infinitely precious to him that he would do anything and has done everything to win you back from sin, from death, and from the power of the devil. If you think about it long enough, It'll go to your head. 
But this is no empty praise. Brothers and sisters, this is the gospel truth. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And let us now offer the sacrifice of thanksgiving, the sacrifice of the lips that confess his name. But to do good and to distribute forget not, for with such things God is well pleased. <laughs> 